Good morning, guys! I was just thinking this morning before I started making this video about how much I miss being in school with you. I hope that you had such a good weekend with your mom and your dad and your brothers and sisters and you are ready for a brand new video today. This morning, for today's video, I want you to think about where you spent your time this weekend. Was it at home with your mom and dad? Was it at a house with grandma and grandpa? Did you go somewhere? To the park? To the laundromat? To the store? To a place to get food? Where did you spend your time this weekend? I know that this weekend I was right here in my apartment. Where were you this weekend? Close your eyes and think. Where were you this weekend? Where did you spend all your time? We can think. Think for a little bit longer. It can be one place or it can be a couple different places. Alright, open your eyes. Do you know where you spent your time this weekend? Where were you? You can go ahead and share with mom or dad or whoever is sitting next to you or if you're watching the video by yourself, as always, you can tell me. Where were you this weekend? That's awesome. That sounds like a great place to be, my friends. Um, some people were probably just one place this weekend. So I know that me, I was mostly just in my apartment this weekend. I was only in one place. And some people were maybe in a couple different places. Maybe they were at home and at the grocery store and um, at the laundromat where they went and they did their laundry. Lots of people spend time in lots of different settings. My friends, have you heard that word before? Setting. Can you say that with me? Setting. Setting means a place where you spend your time. I know that I was in my apartment this weekend, so the setting of my weekend was my apartment. If you were at home with mom and dad this weekend, then the setting of your weekend, the place setting where you spent your time, was at home with mom and dad. Today, we're going to talk more about what setting means, and we're going to talk about the setting or places where the stories that we read take place. But we'll talk more about that in just a second. Time. Let's go ahead and do some gross motor with one of our all-time favorite songs. I'm going to slide the camera right back here while you find a place to stand where there's lots of space for you to dance. All right? And I'm going to angle it so you can see me dance with you. Make sure you're in a spot with a lot Healthy of music for a child's heart, body, and mind. Shake your sillies out from the award-winning CD, Kids Country Song and Dance, by The Learning Station. We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna clap. Jiggles out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna jog, jog, jog our jitters out, jog, jog, jog our jitters out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna jog, jog, jog our jitters out, jog, jog, jog our jitters out, wiggle our wagg
stretch our stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out, wiggle our waggles away. We're going to yawn, 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 Good work, everybody. Oh, that song is such a workout. That is so much exercise in the morning to help our bodies get big and strong. Let's bring the camera back here just a little bit and we'll take some deep breaths to calm down. Ready? You find a place to sit where you can take some deep breaths and start to relax with me. I'm gonna do butterfly breaths today, all right? Let's do five. Number one, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. This is number two. Breathe out. Number three, breathe in. Breathe out. If that was number three, what number is this one? Four. Breathe in. Breathe out. If that was four, then this is five. Breathe in. Breathe out. All right, my friends, deep breathing is over. Amazing job. I'm so glad that we got to exercise together and I'm so glad that we got to relax our bodies together. So now we're ready to learn with our story. Now I said a couple minutes ago that we were going to spend story time today talking about setting. Can you say that word with me? I'll say it, then you say it. Setting. Setting. Setting is where things happen. Say that part with me where things happen. So you remember that the setting for my weekend was my apartment, where I'm at right now. The setting for your weekend was probably at home with mom and dad, but it could have been someplace else too. The store, grandma and grandpa's house, the laundromat, um, a restaurant where you went to go and get some food. You could have lots of different settings for your weekend. Setting is where things happen. This week, we're going to be talking about the settings of lots of different stories. And I want to start off with an example that we know and love. Do you guys remember this book? What's it called? Corduroy? A pocket for corduroy. That's right. Do you remember where this book happens? Where does it happen? That's right. It happens at the laundromat with all the washing machines. That's right. Lisa and her mother go to the laundromat to do their wash. They bring corduroy with them. And after the wash, corduroy gets lost and goes in with all the different clothes. This place hap or this book happens at the laundromat, which means the setting of the book is the laundromat. The laundromat is where this book happens. So the setting is the laundromat. I'm going to draw a picture of that right over here. I have a nice blank piece of paper that I can focus on. The first thing that I'm going to do is write the word setting right up here. It starts with a S. Setting. Just like S for Shana Lise. Setting. S E. T T I N G. And on this paper, I'm going to draw different settings of books that we read. The setting for corduroy, a pocket for corduroy, is the laundromat. So why don't I make a box right here for corduroy and I'll draw the setting. So we can have some washing machines, like the ones that we use in our classroom. We can have some that open up at the top, right? So the clothes can come out this way. We'll put buttons on the side. 
and we'll make, what about a hamper to put the clothes in? So we can draw a picture right here. Now remind me, my friends, where is the setting of a pocket for corduroy? The laundromat. That's where that book happens. The setting is the laundromat. That book happens at the laundromat. Today, we're going to read a brand new story, and we're going to talk about the setting of the book that we are about to read. After we read the book, we'll talk about where it happens, where the setting is, and we'll draw it right up here on our setting chart. Does that sound like a plan? Let's do it, my friends. This is a book that we read at the very beginning of the year, but we haven't read it in so long, I don't know if you'll remember it. It's called... Froggy Gets Dressed. This is a fun and silly book that has a really special setting that is probably going to be familiar to you guys. So as we read it, think to yourself, where is the setting? Where does this book happen? Where is the setting? Keep that question in your mind as you read, and then we'll talk about it once we're done. Froggy Gets Dressed dressed. The author of this book, my friends, is a man named Jonathan London. And if he's the author, that means he writes the words. It's illustrated by a man named Frank Remkiewicz. What a fun name. If he's the illustrator, that means he draws the pictures. Froggy gets dressed. It was cold. Froggy woke up and looked out the window. Snow! He sang snow. I want to play in the snow. Go back to sleep, Froggy, said his mother. Don't you know? Frogs are supposed to sleep all winter. Wake up when the snow melts. Do you guys remember what melting means? Melting means the snow is going to go away. It melts into water when it's warm. So Froggy's mom, does she want him to play in the snow? Mm -mm. She says, go back to sleep, Froggy. You'll go to the snow after it melts. No! No, Froggy said. I'm awake. Awake! I want to go out and play in the snow. So, Froggy put on his socks, zoop, he put on his boots, zoop, he put on his hat, zap, he uh, tied his scarf, zip, he tugged on his mittens, zoop, and he flopped outside into the snow, flop, 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 flop. Froggy, yelled his mother, what, yelled Froggy. Did you forget to put something on? She said. Froggy looked down. <gasps> Oops! He said, I forgot my pants! So he flopped back inside. Flop, flop, flop. He tugged off his mittens. He undid his scarf. He untied his uh, hat. He took off his boots. He left his socks on. And he zipped on his pants. Zip. Then he pulled on his boots. Zip. He put on his hat. Zap. He tied up his scarf. Zip. And he tugged on his mittens. Zap. Then he flopped back outside. Flop, 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 flop. Froggy! Yelled his mother. What? yelled Froggy back. Did you forget to put something on? His mom said. Froggy looked down. <gasps> Oops! He said. I forgot to put on my... What's he missing? My shirt! And your coat, said his mom. 
So, Froggy flopped back inside. Flop, flop, flop. He tugged off his mittens. He untied his scarf. He took off his hat. He left his pants, boots, and his socks on. And he buttoned up his shirt. Zip, zip, zip. Then he snapped on his coat. Snap. He put on his hat. Zap. He tied up his scarf. Twit. And he tugged on his mittens. Zoop. And he flopped back outside into the snow. Uh-oh, what does this say? Do we remember? Who's yelling? His mom. Froggy! Yelled his mother. What? Yelled Froggy. Did you forget to put something on? Froggy looked down. Huh? He had his mittens. He had his scarf. He had on his coat. He had on his shirt. He had on his pants, he had on his boots, he had on his socks. He reached up. Yep, he was wearing his hat. What could he be missing? You forgot your underwear, said his mom. <gasps> oh, cried Froggy. He looked more red in the face than green. So, he flopped back inside, flop, 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 and he tugged off his mittens, he untied his scarf, he unsnapped his coat, he unbuttoned his shirt, he unzipped his pants, he pulled off his boots, he took off his socks, he left his hat on. He slipped his long john underwear on with a zap of elastic. Then he put on one sock, zoop, and he pulled on one boot, whoop, and he tugged on one mitten, zoop, and he started to tie on the other, and then he just let it drop. <sighs> he said, I'm just too tired. So he just went back to sleep. Good night, Froggy. The end. Thank you for the story. Thank you very much. Woohoo! Did you guys enjoy that book? I love it. I think it's so much fun. Do you remember when we read that at the beginning of the year? That was one of the very first books that we read in our class. I love it because it reminds me of the snow that I love to play in, and I also love it because I think it's funny when he forgets to get dressed in so many different ways. He forgets so many different things. He forgets his shirt, he forgets his pants, and then eventually he even forgets his what? His underwear! He has to go all the way back inside the house to change his clothes so many different times. My friends, when we think about the setting of this book, we can think of a couple different places. Let's think, where does this book happen? Where does it happen? We know that the setting is where things happen. So where does this book happen? I'll show you some different pictures. Where is Froggy? Right here, in this part of the book. There are a couple different answers. He's inside his bed, true, but even bigger than that, he's inside his house. He's inside his house. That is one setting of the book. Froggy is inside his house. The book happens inside. But there's another place Froggy goes in this book. Does he stay inside the house for all of the book? Not quite. Where's the other place that he goes? He goes outside, in the snow. Is this page happening outside? 
Is it happening in the snow? So wait, we have two settings for this book. The first one is where? Where did we say this was? Inside his house. One setting where the book happens is inside his house. And the other setting for where the book happens is outside in the snow. We have two settings for this book. Two places where things happen. So let's go ahead and add them to our settings chart. Do you remember our setting for corduroy? We said it happens in the laundromat. I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to make a brand new box right here for our froggy book. We know that froggy happens inside his house. So I'll draw a house right here. We learned all about buildings. So we know that buildings have w w windows and d d doors and a roof. And it also happens where? It happens outside his house, in the snow. So I can make little snowflakes falling. Maybe I'll build a snowman so we remember that it's out in the snow. Awesome. This book has two settings. One, inside his house. Two, outside, in the snow. This book happens in two different settings. I enjoyed reading that book with you so much, my friends, and we will spend the entire week talking about settings. So no need to worry if it's still a little bit confusing right now. We'll get to talk more about it tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. So we'll get lots and lots of practice. I'm glad that you enjoyed reading this story, one of my favorites, and I'm looking forward to talking more about settings with you tomorrow. Um, today for our parent activity, I thought that we could focus on story dictation again, because I don't think that we've done that in a couple weeks. Just a reminder that story dictation is when you sit down with your student, you have a pencil and a piece of paper, or a pen and a piece of paper, and then you can ask your student if they have a story that they want to tell you. And as they tell you their story, you write down what they are dictating on the sheet of paper, word for word as they say it. It could be a made-up story, it could be a real-life story about them and you guys or their family or friends at school, it could be a story that imitates the plot line of like a different movie or a TV show that they really like, but usually the stories that they write in class are a combination of all three things. So you have little bits of pieces of real life in them, and then little bits of made up, and then little bits of like superheroes or Frozen, or stuff that the kids are really interested in. The key is that you want to make sure that what you're writing down is word for word what your student is telling you, to make sure that the story that they're saying is exactly what's on the piece of paper. And as you go through and you write down their story, you can interrupt them and ask them questions about it. Say, so who are the characters in your story? What happens at the beginning of your story? What happens at the end? Um, especially since we spent the last week of videos talking about beginning, middle, and end of stories, those would be three really good vocabulary terms for you to work to reinforce with your student. So now that they know all about beginning and middle and end, you can help them see um, those in their own story. And like if they're writing their story and their story doesn't really have an end, you can say, well, we need to make sure that we have an end in the story where the characters fix their problems. So you can go through and help them set that up in their story. Um, as you write, you can take their finger and you can follow the text from left to right to help them practice that. And then in the end, you can take their finger and you can point to all the different words as you read their story out loud to make sure that it's the way that they want it. If you want to act it out with them after it's done, where you play a certain character and they play a certain character, that's awesome too. You can talk to them about um, changing their face to match the different emotions of the characters and doing really specific movements with their body to match the language that they're hearing. That helps with their cognitive processing um, and their sociodramatic skills. It helps elevate them a lot faster. Um, it's a super great activity. It's one that you can do every single day, not just today. Um, and I hope that you guys have a lot of fun with it. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.